Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug and I'd like to welcome you back to another chemistry video. In this video we're going to be learning about two types of compounds and focusing on how to write names for one of those types of compounds. If you're new to my channel go ahead and take a look around and if you like what you see I'd really love if you would subscribe to my channel that would be a, a great way to help out the channel and also if you like what you see on this video and if you uh, learn something uh, I would love it if you could also hit that thumbs up button that really does help out the algorithm as well. Now as we talked about earlier there are two types of chemical bonds as we learned in, in the last video we have ionic bonds and we have covalent bonds. Well guess what there are also two main types of chemical compounds as well. We have molecular compounds which are formed when two nonmetals make a covalent bond and make a, a chemical compound that way. Now sometimes molecular compounds are called covalent compounds. That's a pretty good name for those two because covalent compounds are formed from covalent bonds. Now ionic bonds make ionic compounds. And as we learned in the last video, an ionic bond is made from a metal and a nonmetal. So when a metal and a nonmetal combine to make an ionic bond, well, guess what? The compound that, that they make is going to be an ionic compound. So we have two types of compounds formed from those two types of chemical bonds. Now in this video, we're going to be focusing on molecular compounds or these covalent compounds. In the next video, we're going to be focusing on how to write the formulas and the names for ionic compounds. Now, before we get too far into this, I'd like to give a little bit of vocabulary here. When we talk about these molecular compounds or these covalent compounds, as we sometimes call them, the smallest unit of a molecular compound that retains the properties of that compound is called a molecule. Now this is a word that you've heard before. You've heard of water molecules, DNA molecules. Well, those substances are molecular compounds. They're created from covalent bonding. So those produce molecules. Now on the other hand, if we have an ionic compound, you know, metal and nonmetal, formed from an ionic bond, the smallest unit of an ionic compound that retains the properties of that substance is called a formula unit. So we have molecules for molecular compounds or covalent compounds and formula units for ionic compounds. Now we're going to jump right into how to write the names for molecular compounds, these covalent compounds. So we'll start with this compound right here, N2O5. And the way that we name these compounds is, to be honest, fairly simple. We just take the fact that we have two atoms of nitrogen here and say di-nitrogen, because di means two, and then five oxygens, we have pentoxide. So di-nitrogen, pentoxide. We just take the last element and change the ending of its name to IDE. So that's why the oxygen became oxide. For example, fluorine would become fluoride. Nitrogen, if it were at the end of the compound, would be nitride. Um, bromine would become bromide and things like that. So we can see that we're going to be using these numeric prefixes here to write the names of these compounds. So di means two, pent or penta means five. Here are some other numerical prefixes that perhaps you've heard of before that we're going to be using as we name these compounds. So one is mono, two is di, three is tri, four for tetra, five is penta, six is hexa, seven is hepta, eight is octa, nine is nana, and ten is a deca. Now there are some prefixes that go beyond ten, but in first year honors chemistry normally we don't go beyond the prefixes for ten. So we're going to jump right in here and name a few more chemical compounds here, some covalent compounds. We'll start with P4O6. So P, of course, is phosphorus, and the fact is that we have four atoms of that, so that's tetraphosphorus, and then we have six oxygens, and we have to change the name of oxygen to IDE at its end, so that becomes oxide, and there are six of these, so that's hexaoxide. 
So tetraphosphorus hexaoxide. Now that's a little bit awkward to pronounce, isn't it? Hexaoxide. As it turns out, there is another little rule that we use here, especially whenever we have an A next to an O. Whenever we have that specific vowel combination, we drop the A. So instead of saying hexaoxide, we call this tetraphosphorus hexoxide. That's a little bit less awkward to pronounce. Another vowel combination that does something similar is if you ever have two O's next to each other. We just drop one of those O's. So that helps us make our pronunciation a little bit less awkward. So tetraphosphorus hexoxide for this compound right here. Now let's try this next compound. In fact, I imagine you probably already know the name of this compound, CO2. Now, you know that that's carbon dioxide, don't you? You've probably seen that in other science classes or just from living your everyday life. And that is the name for this compound. But I have a question for you. Why is it called carbon dioxide and not monocarbon dioxide? Because we can look at the formula and see that there's only one carbon here. Why don't we call it monocarbon dioxide? Well, the rule is that we don't start the name of a compound with mono. So that's why if the first element only has one atom, we're just going to call it by its name. We're not going to put mono on the front of that name. Now it's okay to have mono if it's the second element, but we're not going to have mono on the beginning of the first element. So just carbon dioxide in this case here. Let's try CO. Now this is another uh, compound that you've probably heard of before. C is for carbon, and then the O is monoxide, since there's only one oxygen here. So carbon monoxide for that chemical compound. Let's take a look at another compound here. We'll have CCl4. Now C is for carbon. Once again, we don't put mono on the front of the name of a compound. And then we have four chlorine atoms, so that's tetra chloride. So it's carbon tetrachloride for this one. We can take a look at another one, N2S4. How would you name this compound? Well, N of course is nitrogen, and we have two atoms of that, so that's going to be dinitrogen. And then we have four sulfur atoms, and so four is tetra, and sulfur, well we change its ending to IDE, so that becomes tetra sulfide. So the name of this compound is dinitrogen tetrasulfide. If we look at the next compound here, NO2, now N is nitrogen. We don't start with mono. Nitrogen is just nitrogen. And then 2 is di, and we have two oxygen, so it becomes dioxide. So nitrogen dioxide for this compound right here. How about the next one, BBr3? Well, B is the symbol for boron, so we'll put that here. Once again, we don't start the name of the compound with mono. And then bromine is going to become bromide, and there are three of them, so that's going to be tribromide. So the name of this compound is boron tribromide. We'll do one more here in this video, O2F2. So the prefix for two is di, and O is oxygen, so we have dioxygen. And then F is fluorine, but we change its ending to IDE, so that's fluoride. And we have two of them, so that's difluoride. So dioxygen, difluoride. Once again, we change the ending of the last element to IDE. We don't do that for the first element. We use those numeric prefixes and we never start the name of a compound, of a covalent compound anyway, with mono. Hey, I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please smash that like button. I would really appreciate that. I hope to see you in the next video where we're going to go on and learn about how to write the formulas for ionic compounds. Thanks for watching.